ब्लॉक है
Call me who my father has blessed and heard the king of the very far you since the foundation of the world by the word of the age of the spirits. We place that we crucifix on our remains, and we pray through the resurrection and the death, the death and the resurrection of Jesus, that he's kind of like we want to know the fraud and follow him as Jesus did as the way the truth on the world. from Ecclesiastes uh, a time for everything there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens a time to be born a time to die a time to plant and a time to uproot a time to kill and a time to heal a time to tear down and a time to build a time to, to weep and a time to laugh a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate and a time for war and a time for peace. The, Lord has the, Lord. the responsorial reading is taken from Psalm 23, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still, beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The people stood watching and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. 
they offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews, one of the criminals who hung there held insult at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said. Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Over the many years of my life that I've been a Christian, and as a priest, I've had the experience of being with people in their final days or hours before their death that left this mark on me. My first experience of death was when I was at the age of seven, and the cousin of mine, Anthony Behan, who was seven years of age as well, died of a brain hemorrhage or a brain tumour. And I always remember his, my aunt Kathy and his mother telling us the story that the night that he died, she was holding him in her arms and he kept going stiff and then he would come to and he'd say, Mommy, Mommy, look at all the angels, you can see the angels. And so he was seeing beyond to the eternal life that he's now about to inherit. And that experience gave my Aunt Kathleen a great consolation at the moment of death of losing her youngest son. And then my father, died on the 17th of December 1985. About an hour or so before he died, his last words to us were, as we got around his bed, was that he said to us, lads, remember this, when you get to this stage of life, the only thing that matters now is how you lift it, because you go before the judgment seat of God. They were his last words to us before he passed on an hour later. And then my grandmother, who was a woman of tremendous faith, who had a lot of tragedy in her life, and it was her faith in the resurrected Christ that gave her the strength to endure the tribulations that she underwent. Her last words as before she died was that she had a great devotion to St. Anthony. And at one stage when she went into unconsciousness and came out of it, she took the statue of St. Anthony from her bedside locker. And she looked at him, she wagged her finger and said to him, I'm falling out with you because you haven't come to take me home yet with Jesus. So all these experiences in themselves were experiences that left a great impression on myself and when it comes to facing death, that there is hope in eternal life. And one thing I've noticed not only in my own experience, but also in the parishes that I have served in in this diocese, that people with faith and hope face the natural fear of death differently. They're a living testimony to the fact that life, there is life after death. And I just want to read for you this, this one account which I came across some time ago of one man's reaction to facing his own mortality, which captures the essence of what faith in the resurrection is all about, celebrating our hope in life after death. This is the story. The sound of Tom's voice on the other end of the telephone always brought a smile to Father Jim's face. He was not only one of the eld oldest members of the congregation, but one of, one of the most faithful. Uncle Tom, as all the children called him, just seemed to ooze faith, hope and love wherever he went. This time, however, there seemed to be an unusual tone in his words. Father, could you stop by this afternoon? I need to talk to you. Of course, I said, I'll be there around three. Is that okay? 
As they sat facing each other in the quiet of his small living room, Father Jim learned the reason for what he sensed in Tom's voice. Tom shared the news that the doctor had just discovered a previously undetected tumour. He says I'll probably have six months to live. Tom's words were certainly serious, yet there was a definite calm about him. I'm so sorry too, but before Father Jim could finish, Tom interrupted. Don't be, he said. The Lord has been good. I've lived a long life. I'm ready to go. You know that. I know Father Jim responded with a reassuring nod. But I want to talk to you about my funeral. I've been thinking about it, and there are things that I know I want. The two talked quietly for a long time. They talked about Tom's favourite hymns, the passages of scripture that meant so much to him through the years, and the many memories they shared from the five years he'd been with the parish. When it seemed that they had just covered about everything, Uncle Tom paused, looked up at Father Jim, and with a twinkle in his eye, then added, one more thing, Father. When, you, when they bury me, I want an old Bible in, in, my old Bible in one hand and a fork in the other. A fork? Father Jim was sure he had heard everything, but this caught the boy's surprise. Why do you want to be buried with a fork? Well, he said, I've been thinking about all, those, all of us and all these ch church dinners and banquets that I attended throughout the years. I can't begin to count them all, but one thing sticks in my mind. Are all these really nice get-togethers when the meal was almost finished, a server or perhaps the hostess would come by to collect the dirty dishes? I can still hear the words now. Sometimes, at the best ones, someone would lean over my shoulder and whisper, you can keep your fork. And do you know what that meant? Dessert was coming. It didn't mean a cup of jelly or pudding or even a dish of ice cream. You don't need a fork for that. It meant the good stuff, like chocolate, cake or cherry pie. When they told me I could keep my fork, I knew that the best was yet to come. That's exactly what I want people to talk about at my funeral. Oh, they can talk about all the good times we had together. That would be nice. But when they walk by my casket and look at my best dress suit, I want them to turn to one another and say, why the fork? That's why, what I want you to say. I want you to tell them that I kept my fork because the best is yet to come. The story in itself captures the essence of what we are believe, as believers believe in the resurrection. That when we pass in this world, the best is yet to come. For Beatrice, who is a woman of faith, the best now she has experiences, her experience now, as we pray for her happy repose of her soul, is that she is now in the, in the embrace of God and experiencing the, the eternal banquet that God has prepared for her now instead from all creation. So now I'd like to invite those who are going to do the, read the eulogy, and then we have the prayers of intercession, and then the tributes later on the mass. So the person who's going to read the eulogy, if you want to come forward now and read the eulogy. Mrs. Beatrice Aduma Genfi live a full life. She interacted with and impacted on the, on the lives of a great many people. Such was her effect that she became known as Auntie P to, most, to almost all of us. She was my sister. On 4th March 2024, our beloved sister B's clock of life firmly stopped. She was 84 years old. It is only so often that a man or woman is born who is destined to make a lasting impression on his or her generation. One such woman was Auntie B. Born on the 3rd of August, 1939, at Aguna Crofonso in Ashanti region of Ghana, to Mr. Joseph Amu Mensah, 
of blessed memory and his wife, Madame Mary Baker, also deceased. She commenced formal education at Acrofonso LDA Elementary School, from where she proceeded to Bequai LDA Secondary School for her secondary education. In a bid to become a teacher, she enrolled at St. Monica's Teaching Training College, Mampon Ashanti, and at the end of her studies, started her teaching career at Bantuma LA School. Kumasi near, near today's Abrikot Junction. She subsequently taught at Bonyure and Asokore Mampong, which was her last teaching post before traveling overseas. Sister B married Mr. Alfred Benjamin Kojo Preprajan Fee in Ghana in 1969. In 1970, they, she traveled to Manchester, England with her husband, where they were later joined by their daughter, Evelyn. Her life in Manchester started in Epping Walk, Hill. Because her teaching qualifications were not immediately transferable, she found employment as a clerk in, at a clerk at Lewis's department store in Manchester City Centre. Diligent, industrious, and supportive wife as she was, she occupied herself to good effect and, and took on additional work. She had an early morning job as a cleaner at Asda and another in the evening at TSB Bank in more sight, present, sometimes taking her daughter Evelyn with her. Working at Lewis's department store, was not fulfilling enough for her. She wanted more. So she undertook a course in catering management at Manchester Polytechnic, near Man Manchester Metropolitan University. She studied at their, at their Hollins, the Toast Rock, as it was known, campus. And when she passed the course with Flying College, she, re she resigned as a sales clerk in favor of a newfound love for catering. <clears throat> Beatrice was initially employed at Hotel Piccadilly in the Manchester city center. She enjoyed working there, but unfortunately had an accident that left her unable to work for a period. When she resumed work, it was as a catering supervisor in, in the NHS at Woodington Hospital. She held this and other positions in Whittington for about 20 years, where she built lasting friends with her colleagues, especially among them, Josephine Bailey, who she became lifelong friends with. In, in 1999, she, re she re retired from Whittington Hospital. It was after her retirement that with her husband, Mr. Jemke, she began to make plans to go back to Ghana. They had built their house in Tema, where both retired and felt it was time to go home. They returned to Ghana in 2000, in the year 2000, to settle permanently. Even in retirement, she would shuttle between Ghana and Manchester on a, on a fairly regular basis until health issues meant that she had to move back permanently. The rest, as the saying goes, is history. Sister B, as well known in the Ghanaian community, together with Alfred, her husband, they played significant roles in the Ghana Union of Manchester. He was an integral executive member of the union, and they would regularly open up their home to members of the Ghanaian community from, from far and, and wide, including newly arrived and already established in Manchester and surrounding towns to offer friendship and, and uh, fellowship. She was also involved in a number of other societies. She was a member of the African Women's Health Group set up by the Black Health Agency, where incidentally her daughter Evelyn was the chief executive to bring African women together to look at their health issues. She was a founding member of the Ghanaian Catholic Community of Manchester 
and the and the what is it? And the only adok and the only daku and the only adok daku fraternal law society. A sorority of Ghanaian women living in Manchester. She was a particular active member of these groups, taking part in all their activities. After losing her husband in December 2014, she immersed herself in club activities and enjoys traveling on holidays with BCCM to Turkey and Portugal. Sister B loved life. She was sociable and wise. She was trusted by so many people within the Ghanaian community and beyond. So many people called her Auntie B and saw her as a mother figure. She had a very strong faith. One that came, her, one that carried her through the, the joys as well as the trials and tribulations of life. She was a woman of integrity, compassion, and kindness who gave so much to her fam family, community, and friends. She was a very special soul. She is survived by her daughter Evelyn and grandchildren Leon, Saadi, Essie, and Afia, and great-grandchildren Mia, Bobby, Ryan, and Elias. Lastly, no words can ever express the deepest sorrow that engulfs our hearts, and no tribute will ever sufficiently capture the gem of a woman that was anti B. Our sister, mother, grandmother, great grandmother, friend, an idol, our inspiration, our icon, and our all. May she rest in peace, perfect peace. Thank you very much. So let us call trustingly upon God, the Almighty Father, who raised Christ the Son from the dead for the salvation of the living and the dead. Our sister received in her baptism the seed of eternal life. May she enjoy the company of the saints forever, Lord hear us. This our sister was nourished by Christ's body, the bread of eternal life. May she rise again on the last day, Lord hear us. Let us pray for the souls of our families, relations and benefactors. May they receive the reward of their labours, Lord hear us. Lord, us. Let us pray for all who sleep in, in the hope of resurrection. May they be brought into the light of God's presence, Lord hear us. Lord, us. Let us pray for all who have come here today to pray for this in the spirit of faith. May we all attain to the kingdom of God. Of of glory, Lord, hear us. Lord, us. <coughs> we unite all our prayers now with Mary, our mother, who stood at the foot of the cross. Hail Mary, full of grace, and the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Hear, O Lord, the prayers of all who call upon you for the souls of your servants. May they be released from all their sins, and we may share us of your redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be please be seated now and have the offertory hymn, How Great Thou Art. Amen.
bundle consists is that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, Father, and to the voice of his church. As we humbly present to you the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Beatrice, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your Son to be a loving Saviour may find in him mercy for judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. Of me. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by his death, you will to reconcile us to yourself Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain the <coughs> inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, and whose constant intercession in your presence we rely from failing help. May this and class of our reconciliation be prayer of all. Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity. Your kingdom church on that. To your servant, Francis Apple, John Abisha, the other bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Blessing graciously to the prayers of this family, whom we have sent more before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you as passing from this life, especially Madame Davis. Give kind and to the kingdom. There we hope and enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you saw the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command and from a divine teaching we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. hope of resurrection who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, for you say the word and my soul shall be.
that perpetual light shine upon her, which your saints forever for you are merciful. You cannot rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her, with your saints forever for you are merciful. Now, during the distribution of communion, you will have to him blessed assurance. We'd like to invite those among us in the not to receive the Eucharist from far for blessing, in the case you record a blessing, put your hands across your shoulders by yourself. Thank you.
your God-fearing and always mature your children and all those that came their way live happily and conform to the standards of God. She was a mother to all and a counselor of and the counselor offering advice to people who came to her with their problems. <coughs> Grieving and mourning will not bring you back, but have the consolation that you are resting peacefully in our Creator's womb. Surely I have lost my rare and precious sister. The modest, virtuous, and reliable advisor. You have run your best in the full distance, ways and kept the faith. Now, waiting for you is the victory prize of being put to the right of God, which, it, which the law, the right of death, will give you on the day. 2 Timothy 4, verse 7 to 8. My sister, rest in peace. You were there when I had Leon, 
in the room with me for 17 and a half hours. You came when I had Chardé, just missing the birth of my ears. And you were there with Essie and Matthew came home. You were there every step of the way for your great grandchildren, Mia, Bobby, and Ryan. And Elias. I'm not sure what Ryan is going to do without her early morning visit to you for biscuits and tissues. It was such a blessing and privilege that you to need to meet Elias, to hold him and to make him. A lasting picture is of you holding him and both of you smiling. Well, I think he was smiling, but it could have been weaned. We thank you. You have been through all my trials of love and relationship, always with sage advice and wisdom, and telling me to put my faith in God and not to be afraid. That God will always be there, and he is. It was with this faith that carried you through. Your life wasn't always easy. And your faith in God was always real. Even when your health started to fail and you lost your sight, you never lost hope or your belief. I'm so proud of your strength. You were the true definition of a matriarch. I hope I made you proud. I have a lasting memory of you when I received my OBE and you came to the palace with me. There was never any doubt that you were going to come with me. In your mind, it was a given. There is a picture of you and I holding me up the end. And when I showed it to a friend, she asked me if it was me or you that got me in. <laughs> <laughs> you held it with such pride. I hope the other things I did also made you proud and made you happy. I couldn't have done half the things I had done without you. You truly were the room beneath my wings. I'm not sure how I'm going to go on without me. I know that I will carry you with me always. Your words, your words, the way you did things. You taught me to believe in myself, to strive to be the best that I can be, to be humble, to have compassion for people, to accept people where they are, just as you have always accepted me through all my different phases. And you taught me always to believe in God and to walk with Him. Mrs. Beatrice, and the my friends, Jesse. Mama, it has been a privilege and the honor of my life to be your daughter. Thank you. Mama, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for it all. Thank you for the love and the laughs 
I thank you most of all for allowing me to be me. incense. We use incense for two reasons. The 
first reasons we are referencing the interest is body for all of us in the way and the God's Holy Spirit. Even though our spiritual soul is now left and gone to God, we still reference our body for all of us in the life and the God's Holy Spirit. So that's the first reason we use the incense. The second reason we use the incense is it's a symbol of all of our prayers ascending to the throne of God on behalf of our sister who has died, commending her soul to the living God. So we pray now what we call the farewell chant. And we, the response which I'd like you all to say is, Present her to God the Most High. Present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid. Come to meet her angels of the Lord. Welcome her soul. Present her to God the Most High. May Christ who called you welcome you. And may the angels bring you into the arms of God. Welcome her soul. Present her to God the Most High. For our grants of everlasting rest and let perpetual light shine upon her. Our oh, merciful Father, we commend the soul of this our sister Beatrice into your hands. We are strengthened by the sure hope that she, together with all who have died in Christ, will rise again with Christ on the last day. We thank you for all the blessings with which you endowed this day of yours in the life on earth. They are for us too with token of your love and of the best union of the saints in Christ. Listen then, Lord, in your mercy to our prayers that the case of paradise may be open to your servants, and that we who are left may console one another with words of faith until we all meet in Christ and with you and our sister eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we know we'll open the coffin to have the fire pass. During the time of the fire pass, we have the music being played, the fire pass songs, which are in your book on page 24 and 26.
Thank mm-hmm. you.
<laughs> now our sister Beatrice has gone to her rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome her to the table of God's children in heaven. With faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist her with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we, may we who mourn be reunited one day with our sister. Together may we be Christ Jesus when he who is alive appears again in glory. And so we read in the sacred scripture, our true home is in heaven and Jesus Christ is return we long for will come from heaven to save us. Okay, lads. Thus God has chosen to call our sister Beatrice from this life to himself, we commit our body to the earth, for we are dust and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he has risen the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our sister to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace her in peace and raise her body on the last day. Dear friends, in reverence, let us pray to God, the source of all mercy. You raise the dead to life. Give our sister Beatrice eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord, you console Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Beatrice and dry the tears of those who weep. We pray to the Lord. L Lord, have mercy. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of our sister Beatrice. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray for all who are buried in this cemetery. May their suffering be lessened. May their joys be increased. May the light of glory shine on them. And may they rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. So we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Loving God, from whom all life proceeds and by whose hand the dead are raised again, though we are sinners, you wish always to hear us. Accept the prayers we offer in sadness for your servant Beatrice. Deliver her soul from death and number her among your saints and clothe her with the robe of salvation to enjoy forever the, del forever the delights of your kingdom. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, <coughs> you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You're attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry, cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and, and let, let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. Amen. And may her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you all, to which you now and always. Amen. 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 We go now in the peace of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The sun shines on the righteous. The sun is on the shine. Top. That's okay.